Welcome to another briefings with Lynn and Bonnie. And uh, today I'm, you know, I'm really not sure what to call the message other than uh, you're wrong. <laughs> so uh, it's How about, uh, I'm not right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? The, the funny thing is we we're we're not right. You know, even when we are right, we're not, it's, that doesn't get us a ticket into heaven. It's, it's not by our works. It's not by our righteousness. It's not by anything other than Jesus and what he did on the cross. And, uh, through his life, you know, we've been, we've been set apart. We've been redeemed and we, we, I'm going to say, get our ticket to heaven. We, we, we are acceptable. We are full of hope because of him and, and not because of ourselves. And um, I've just over the last few weeks, I've been uh, combing through the scriptures and uh, I just, it's like popping out at me everywhere. And I thought, well, this, this must be what the Lord really wants to talk about. So might as well start talking about it. Um, I, I notice, you know, in Proverbs, it's uh, 16.2 and 21.2. Uh, uh, you know, every way of a man they, they think is right. And God's the one who looks at the heart. Um, every every way of a man appears right in his own eyes, but, but God weighs the hearts. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Because in our flesh, you know, we want our own will. So of course we're going to think that our way is right. Mm -hmm. And, and the only way that it's right is if it's in him, according to his will. Yep. It doesn't matter what side of the political party you sit right. on or you know voted for or what church you go to or it, none of i mean it matters but it it doesn't matter as far as getting into heaven it's have you agreed with god that's yeah that's because, really you it. know what yeah because we need to be kingdom minded and mm -hmm. um you know and unless we are if we are then we're going to agree with him and be justified in him you know yeah. righteous and justified him but you know we tend to want our own way and we look at things in a worldly view and so yeah. we're right in our own eyes well and that's the that's perspective that i think probably every argument starts from is is you know i've i've been uh mistreated or uh something has unjustly been done and yeah, what what is whatever I'm thinking is it's got to be right because I'm I'm on my side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, we want, that's we want that's, God on our side. We want to be on His exactly. Side. That's and that's funny with Joshua. He 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 said or, to the angel of the Lord, "Are you on our side or are you on the, our enemy's side?" Right, and he said neither. Yeah, <laughs> neither. Yeah. I'm on God's side. That's, that's right. Basically, yeah. what he said. Um, you could look at the Laodicean church and they, they're, they, they sound like they got it all together that you know, we're rich. We've got, you know, we're fully clothed. We got everything that we could possibly need. We're in need of nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, you're still in need of God. Yeah. yeah they forgot they're not that. aware of it. And he <laughs> said, you don't know you're blind, wretched, poor, naked. You're, yeah you've you've got nothing and and the only the only difference between them and and i'd say the church of philadelphia would be they and they know where they're at and they are open to receive help right absolutely yeah, yeah. You, i mean yeah. you can you can look at the pharisees and they uh, they missed, they missed the appearance of Jesus. I mean, in the flesh, uh, because they felt they were right. And, and what did Jesus say? You know, I, I haven't come to call the righteous to repentance. I I've come to call sinners 
I, I, right. the prostitutes and the tax collectors and and all the people that you think aren't going to get into heaven they're they're first at the door because they know they've got the problem and they're willing to admit it and and repent right and you know and that's where all christians were at some at point. some point yeah because uh and i know you referenced here mark um 2 17 jesus said those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick i did not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance so mm -hmm. yeah you know way back when whenever it was you know it could have been yesterday you know but <laughs> however long it was that we were saved you know we at some point Jesus called us to repentance. Yeah. No, he doesn't need to call me today to repentance because, you know, I'm saved. However, you know, do I still mess up? Do I still need to repent? Yes. Holy Spirit lives inside me, which convicts me of my sin and I repent, but I don't need Jesus to come knocking at my door and say, you need to repent your sinner. You know, like my, preacher used to say when i was a kid you all we're all sinners and we're all going to hell you know so every sunday they all went forward and got saved again every single sunday you know so but no we <laughs> but we we need that what, what would you say about the physician uh the physician doesn't yeah he doesn't uh treat the people that are healthy he treats the ones that are sick yeah can you imagine calling making a doctor's appointment and going in. <laughs> what are you here for? Oh, nothing. I'm absolutely fine. I just came to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to let you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's something. So I told the doctor one time, you know, how are you? I said, well, I guess if I was good, I wouldn't be here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling lousy. That's why I came to see you. And, you know, that's the way it is with God. He, he, he doesn't perform miracles to people who don't need them. He's a fatherless to, or he's a father to the fatherless. Right. He's a husband to the widow. He, he gives children to the, to the barren. He brings healing to the brokenhearted. It, it's not, he brings healing to those who are doing good and, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I think, you know, what you're saying is, you know, we have wrong thinking, you know, mm -hmm. you know, because we think we're right in our own eyes. And the only way we can truly be right or righteous is through the work of the cross. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's it's funny, even uh, David, and I don't remember exactly where it is, um, but he I know he was out. I probably, I don't know, he was out in the countryside somewhere and someone came out and started yelling an accusation against him. And he didn't say, well, you know what, I'm the king, you know, get that guy and, and, you know, teach him a lesson. He, he said, he said, hey, you're probably right. Like, and he just said, I'll, I'll repent right now. Like there wasn't, it wasn't the, it wasn't the opposite. Like what, what your flesh would be like, get that, you know, a, no, I'm right. How could you, yeah. how dare you? Well, he didn't do that. He just said that yeah, probably I'll just repent right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Job, you know, Job, he, uh, he sacrificed or he made sacrifices for his children just in case they had sinned. That's right. He did. Yeah. And, you know, I always wondered about that because he was doing it for them. Yeah. It's like they weren't, it's almost like they weren't responsible for themselves. Potentially, you know? but you know, it was, it was just, I think that feeling like a covering, yeah. you know, I'm responsible yeah. for them. So, you know, I'm just going to put out a sacrifice for them anyways. Yeah. So it was, that's just real interesting how, uh, how the perspectives change or, you know, depending on where your perspective is, what, what your reaction is. Yeah. That's 
true. So anyways, I, well, it's something to think about. I think the perspective of, uh, you know, I, I'm going to put up my best defense and make sure everybody thinks that I'm, you know, doing great. It kind of disqualifies you a bit. Uh, or disables you from seeing or hearing from the Lord. But those who come with a contrite spirit are, are the ones who actually receive the blessings. That's true. You know, and I know you heard Bob say this often. You are perfect while being perfected. Yeah. Now, because first time I heard him say that, I thought, well, I, I am not perfect. Now, there's a perfectionist uh, spirit you know, yeah. and that's where you think that you are just perfect in everything that you do and you try to do everything perfect and none of us can do everything perfect. We want to have a spirit of excellence, but not yeah. perfection. Okay. Yeah. But, um, but perfect while being perfected because we are continuously being perfected into his, into the image of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, so I think that kind of goes along with that, you know, it's like, we're we're right in our own eyes but we need to be righteous in him in the work of the cross and in that we continually be perfected mm. into his image yeah so, hmm. that's my story i'm sticking to it sounds good <laughs> well now are you done Oh, I, I, you know, I, I was thinking I was. What, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to remind everybody if they enjoy our YouTube channel to subscribe and what? Um, click on the little bell. Click on the bell. There yeah. you go. How I are we going to do that? that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. thank you for watching, and we'll be back with you another time. Amen. Take care. <laughs>